Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me James. Hope you guys are all doing well and I'm back with another guide on Ark Survival Evolved. This channel is all about completing games and I've got plenty of guides for Ark Survival Evolved. Everything you need to know you can find here so don't forget to subscribe if you are new here. But in this guide we're going to be talking about some more late game and advanced tactics. I'm going to be talking about the tech gave and some of the moves that I use in there. So perhaps if you consider that one spoilers and you want something a little bit more basic then check out some of my other guides. Not only are we continuing with my playthrough and showing you how to complete this game without mods in a condensed version of the story, I've also got plenty of other guides, everything from how to get started, dinosaurs that I find useful to tame first, building tips and tricks, and everything you need to know, and I'm always adding more guides and tutorials as we continue. But today we're going to be focusing on more advanced tips. So as of 2020, there's been over 16 million copies of Ark Survival Evolved sold. And if we look at the Steam achievements, you can see only a very tiny amount of the player base have actually managed to complete this game. 5.5% of them have just managed to ascend on Alpha, and that doesn't even take into account as to whether they use mods or not. But I focus on not using mods and completing the game on all formats. So the first thing I want to talk about is tributes and trophies. As well as completing all of the caves and getting the artifacts in the game, you're going to need these tributes and trophies in order to face the bosses. You're going to need five of each to complete it on beta and ten of each to complete it on alpha. But one of the things you need to be aware of is some of these trophies are a little bit more harder to come across than others. You'll end up with plenty of Megalodon Tooth, I'm sure. But things like the Megalania Toxin, the Spinosaurus Sail and the Phylacolio Hook can be a little bit more difficult to come across. And one of the reasons for this is when you're fighting these dinosaurs, sometimes these trophies can be left behind in a bag. So in order to combat this, you want to be aware of when you're fighting and collecting these trophies to actually pick up the bag if the dinosaur doesn't pick up the trophy itself. On the island map, there will only be two or three Spinosauruses at once and sometimes you'll find that if you haven't been collecting the Spino sails, that you can end up needing a dozen or so just to be able to go in the fight. And that's an extra day of grinding out Spino sails. So right there we managed to pick one up, but I think it's relating to the amount of weight on the dinosaur as to whether it will pick it up. And the same goes for Phylacolio claws and Megalania toxins. These are two of the rarer dinosaurs and you're going to need them trophies. So if you do kill them, make sure you pick up the trophy. Otherwise you're going to be spending a day afterwards collecting these various tributes just to be able to fight the boss. The next tip I've got relates to the Amamite Bile. These are the little shellfish that you find at the bottom of the ocean. They are quite rare and they do tend to spawn in the two artifact caves in the ocean, but they drop a toxin that's quite important to be able to create the pheromone dart. Again, most people are going to skip this ingram thinking it's more of a player versus player ingram and it is great in PvP play. You can just hit a player with that and then suddenly all the dinosaurs that are attacking that player. But in order to craft this, you need the fabricator and you're going to need some Amamite Bile. And this is going to be really handy in that tech cave fight. Firing one of these darts at a Giga is going to cause everything in that cave to attack the Giga meaning that you're saving your dinosaurs for that final battle. You're going to have a timed run once you get in there and taking some of these darts is really going to help out. You're going to have to create them before you go into the fight because they have a spoil timer on them, but you can put them in the fridge to make them last a little bit longer. When you're in the tech cave, just firing one of these darts at one of the dinosaurs is going to cause all of the other dinosaurs to aggro on that dinosaur and you're going to reduce a lot of the other creatures in there that you have to take out because the creatures that you're escorting through that cave you really want to keep back for the last fight. So in the tech cave itself you're going to be under a time limit but when you get to the bottom of this round run you'll see this great big lava fall and this is a really good sniper nest. Once you've cleared out the area at the bottom and it's safe to get off your dinosaur 
fire some pheromone darts down here and try and clear out this area. And more often than not, your first Giga is gonna spawn somewhere around this area. And there's a high chance you can get it in the lava before you even get down there. Failing that, if the Giga has spawned a little bit further forward or back, you may want to kite it into this lava pit just here. Again, using a pheromone dart is gonna really, really help you out here. As you get to the end of the cave, you'll see the door that links the entrance to the Overseer's Arena and a Giga will spawn in front of this door. Many players are tempted to jump off this little surface here, down here, and that's pretty much a bad move. What I would do is once you see that door, just carry on round to your right hand side. Sometimes that Giga will not spawn in or render in until you get a little bit closer. So if you just carry on to the right hand side, you can get a much better shot on the Giga from this point of view. If you take a shot at the Giga from this point, it will render in and you'll drag it into the lava. Again, saving your dinosaurs for that final fight. Okay, the last tip I've got for you is in relation to kibble. I've done a complete guide on everything that you need to know about kibble since the rework, but one of the things that many players don't seem to realize is you don't need hundreds of creatures around your base anymore to create kibble. You can actually use fertilized eggs. The amount of times I've seen people who've got at least a dozen UTs laying around just waiting for eggs to be laid, it's not actually necessary. Just use the fertilized eggs, have a male and a female set to breed and just bank loads of eggs in the fridge and you'll never run out of the exceptional kibble. And this kibble can be used to tame all levels of creatures. I wouldn't recommend it as much for everything that you tame as you do have to use Lazarus chowder and other things to be able to tame the creatures. And I suppose if you are using the nanny mod, then you don't need all of the kibbles anymore. That kind of makes that aspect of the game a little bit more obsolete. But there is no need to have dozens and dozens of Uteranuses laying around just to get yourself a few eggs. Literally just set any female and male off to breed and use the fertilized eggs to make your kibble. And if you want to know more about kibble, then check out my other guide that goes right into depth on everything that you need to know. But most importantly, know that you can use fertilized eggs. So to make all tiers of kibble, it's just a case of having a male and a female. You don't need loads and loads of dinosaurs anymore. Just set them off to breed and you're all golden. And one last tip I've got for you, I've probably mentioned this one before, but if you're breeding dinosaurs and you want to get a full imprint on a dinosaur and the youngster asks for something you haven't got, maybe it's a version of the kibble that you need, you can cryo-freeze that dinosaur, immediately throw it out and it does reset what it asks for. So if you don't get exactly what you want, perhaps you just want to walk or cuddle it or something and you get asked for a kibble or perhaps some raw plying meat and you haven't got it available, just cryo-freeze the dinosaur, throw it back out and it will ask for something different and you won't really affect the timing on it so you'll still be able to get all your imprints and cuddles in. So there's another little just tip for those of you that are breeding without using any mods and the nanny. I will be continuing with Ark Survival Evolved. We are currently on Scorched Earth and I'll be facing one of the caves later this week. So don't forget to keep your eyes open for that, especially if you've been following the series as we're going to complete the whole of Ark Survival Evolved and I'm making it into sort of a mini story. And uh, it's taken me a year and a half to get as far as I have already not using any mods because I put quite a lot of effort into edit them videos. So if you're new here, go and check out my complete series. But that's all the time I've got for this one. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.